Hey, this is Randy from Randy's Tropical Plants. Today is going to be a video on pineapples, on how to maintain pineapples once they've already bloomed and produced for you. Now there's lots of videos out there on how to grow pineapples, especially on how to turn the crowns into plants. I'm actually going to mention that in this video, but I'm going to talk a whole lot more in depth. There's going to be information on how to fertilize the pineapple, how to maintain the pineapple once it's bloomed, what the different parts of new growths are. The, the, you got the crowns, the slips, the suckers, the ratoons. You're going to see all of those, how to remove them, how to plant them, how to prune the plant. So I hope this video will be really useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. So this is the pineapple just before I harvest it. You can see it's got two suckers on it. These two big suckers right here. I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna leave this one on. And I'm gonna harvest this pineapple right now. So I harvest it by simply grabbing it here and twisting it to the side, just a sideways twist, just like that. That's actually how I'm gonna remove the crown from this too. Uh, I've made some pineapple videos in the past, but they weren't exactly very detailed, and I've had a lot of people request more details from those, from, from those videos. I uh, am going to show you how to grow a pineapple from the crown today. There's lots and lots of videos on that online, but I, I'm, I'm, since I'm going to do it, I might as well show you how I do it. But I'm, what I am going to show you that there's not a lot of videos for online is what to do once you harvest the pineapple, how to prune it, how to care for it after that. Because the most common question I get is what, what happens to the pineapple after it produces fruit? Does the plant die? Will it produce another fruit? Will it ever bloom again? Or do I just have to grow it from the crown again? Uh, I'll answer all of those questions and I'll show you in great detail exactly what to do to get more pineapples sooner and get big beautiful pineapples like this. Now I harvest this this pineapple a little early. It's mostly yellow and it smells it smells real nice and pineapple-y right now. Um, but I probably won't eat it until it turns completely yellow. I would like to leave it on the plant until it does that, but if I were to do that in my yard, either a raccoon or a possum or a rat would eat this pineapple. Once they start to smell pineapple-y, I have to harvest them, otherwise, otherwise I won't get to eat them at all. But pineapple plants do not produce the sugar inside the fruit the way a lot of other fruits do. Uh, like a banana, for instance, produces starches inside the fruit. And then the starches are converted into sugars via enzymes once the fruit begins to ripen. That doesn't happen inside of a pineapple. When you harvest a pineapple, it has as much sugar as it's going to have. The flavor is going to change because it's going to ferment and the acids break down and the oxalic, the uh, uh, calcium oxalate crystals are going to break down because of enzymes. But the sugars, the amount of sweetness is exactly what it's going to be the minute you harvest it. So uh, you really do want to let them get to as close to ripeness as you can get. And if you don't have problems with rats, raccoons, and possums in your yard, I'd wait until they're completely orange. Uh, and that's what I would have done, but I wouldn't get to eat this if I did. There'd be a big hole and, it, and a rat would have chewed its way into it. So anyway, uh, I will show you all of, all of how to maintain your pineapple plants post-production uh, right now. So now you can see that in addition to the two suckers that are on there, there are two slips, and they're attached to the flower stem here. So we're going to break those off. These you can't leave on the plant. They have to come off because this flower stalk is going to die soon. So we'll go ahead and pull them both off, and it's just a sideways twist. Now we have the two suckers that are left. Now there's no ratoons on this plant, but if there were, they'd be coming up through the ground near the base of the plant. There aren't any, so uh, I wish I had a ratoon to show you, but I don't. Uh, but we've got two suckers on the plant, two good sized ones. We're going to leave this one on. This is the bigger one, it's the more robust one. So now, if you get down to the bottom, the leaves are much smaller, you've got to get it down at the base of that. So we're going to grab it as low as we can and twist it off sideways as well. There we go. 
window and you have something just like the crown on the top of a pineapple. You can see there's pithy core right there. So we're going to plant this just like you would the crowns and the slips. So now what's left is just the original plant, the rosette of the plant with the flower stem coming out of the center, the inflorescence here. And then you've got the sucker growing up next to it. Now I'm going to leave this in here. And it does not need to grow roots. It's already got this beautiful root system down here. This thing is just going to grow like crazy. So I'll show you uh, the difference I've got across my yard. I have uh, from last year the sucker plant that's exactly one year old right now from this point. And I'm going to show you that. It's planted very near uh, a slip, just like the ones that came off of the flower stem on the side. And I'll show you the difference between one that's left on the plant and a little one that you that you root out and grow. So this is the sucker from last year that I left on. You can see almost one year exactly to the day it has another flower on it. So you don't have to wait for two or three years before you get a, a bloom. You can get them every single year. And this is the slip. And it's just a little tiny guy. It's got another year to go, uh, at least, at least. But uh, Anyway, just wanted to show you, this one I had to tear off and root, just like those little slips over there. But this one already had its own root system, and it just got to growing right away, and now it's blooming, and I'll get another beautiful pineapple out of it. Alright, now, this is the same plant in January, following January, and I wanted to show you this. I've been slacking on finishing this video. I still have a little more footage I want to take, but... In the meantime, this thing popped up. This is a ratoon. This is what I was talking about. Now I'm going to be pulling this off of the plant. This is the original uh, pup that I left on. This is a, actually a sucker from between the leaves. The original plant that was the rosette that was growing is pretty much mostly gone at this point. It's sort of, this is, here it is. This is the flower stalk. And here's some, old, some of the older leaves. Uh, mostly this plant is all the new foliage and so I'm going to dig this out and I'm going to show you how it's attached it's coming up off of the rhizome of the, the plant you can see it's actually not coming up from the plant itself it's coming up from underground there's actually space between it and the ground uh, and it's coming up from the rhizome so I'm going to dig that out and uh, move it because we don't want these, they're too close to each other, they're going to be competing with each other. And this guy's going to produce a great big beautiful pineapple real soon. We just got a freeze and uh, you can see there's a little bit of frost damage on these on these leaves here, so this one's pretty frost damaged. But this plant will be fine, I actually don't even cover uh, pineapples uh, when we get these freeze events and I've never actually lost a pineapple from a freeze I've gotten a lot of damage like what I just showed you, but I've never actually lost one. We got down into the 20s So uh, I got a lot of pineapples out here in this field of pineapples that have got a lot of burned leaves on them But they're they're all gonna be fine, and I'll, I'll probably get some nice fruits this year Okay now I have dug away the soil, and you can see this is the, the rhizome, the original rhizome of the plant. And look, it's got another rattoon like it started to form right there, but this is a rattoon up off of the rhizome. And I'm just going to snap this guy right off, just like I have all the others. But it came off pretty easily. There we go. Already rooted and ready to go into a pot. And I'm just going to put the mulch and everything back where it belongs. There we go. Easy peasy rice and cheesy. Now we're back to just one growth. Not competing with itself anymore. So, a lot of people when they harvest the tops off of the pineapples in a lot of videos, they'll cut, they'll cut the top off. The problem with doing that is that you're leaving some of the fruit attached to the bottom. There's stem tissue inside of this crown, down near the base of it. We're going to expose some of that, but we don't want any of that fruit on the bottom because that's going to rot. That's going to allow bacteria to get in there and it could rot the entire crown. So the, the way I do it is exactly the same way. I just kind of slide my hand up like this so I can get it right on the bottom and then with a twist on the side, just like that. And then uh, I'll actually maybe even cut a little tiny bit off the bottom of there. 
very next thing I'm going to do, set this down down here, is you want to pull all these little leaves off the bottom. And you don't have to be all that careful about it, just grab them and yank. Uh, when you pull them like to the side a little bit, they come off a little more easily. So, And I can see here, this has already got, and I'll show you on the camera, I'll do a close up. Hopefully it'll get it. And I keep going a fair amount. You want to expose a fair amount. You don't need these little leaves. So and that's probably good. You want to expose at least a good inch. When it starts to taper a little bit like that, that's when I stop. But you could keep going if you wanted. But if you look, right here, there's already roots. I hope the camera's getting focusing on that. There's already roots. And that's common uh, a lot of the time. So I, I may not actually, I might just just shave a little bit of that off the bottom just to make sure that that doesn't rot. And then this is gonna be rooting within a week or two. This is gonna have nice big healthy root system on it. I'll dig it up and I'll show that to you though uh, in another week just to show you how well it roots when you do it the way I do it. Okay, so you can see here, these are the two slips that I got off of the plant. This is the crown that I took off of the pineapple fruit. And this is the sucker, this is the big sucker that I pulled off of, off of the plant as well. And you can see I did the same thing to all of them. I peeled some of the, the leaves off of the base of all of them. Now, the crowns and the slips, because the plant is preparing for these to fall off at some point and hit the ground and then grow, they already have they already have little roots on them all of them do but the sucker the plant didn't intend for this to ever fall off it was going to grow into a new rosette um, but it had two and i only want it to have one and the reason i only want it to have one is because i want that plant to focus all of its energy on the one sucker that i left on and so i took this one off if you had left them both on you'd eventually get two pineapples on that on that plant but those pineapples wouldn't be as big and beautiful and sweet and delicious as the one that I got today. And by taking this one off, the plant will focus all of its energy on the one remaining sucker that I left on. But this one will eventually root. It doesn't have root nubs on it yet, but it will eventually root and grow into a, a plant just like these will. So in addition to the sucker that's left on the plant, which will grow a pineapple, I got four additional plants. And that's, that's how you can very quickly uh, increase your pineapple patch to, to a very large size. But I'm going to plant these out now and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so I'm about to plant these guys, but I decided to do this real quick. Hopefully this shows up well on the camera. Uh, I made these two lines here on, on this pineapple crown. This is the actual crown for the top of the fruit. Now, what this line represents is the line you want to go at least this deep when you plant it in the soil. Uh, then there's a dotted line on it here. Which, this is sort of like a no-fly zone. You don't want to go beyond that. Because if you plant it deeper than that, the meristem tissue, which is way down in the center here, will actually be below the soil. This is about the level of where that meristem tissue is at. And if it's below the level of the soil, then soil will pack up on top of it and it'll rot and it'll die. Now if you have it too shallow, you might not, a lot of the roots are going to come from the stem up here and you just might have not enough contact with the soil to grow roots efficiently and then the plant could just like dehydrate and die before it gets a chance to root out. So there's this sort of like nice optimal zone. I'm going to probably shoot for of the soil level being somewhere around here, but I'm going to plant these all up right now. Well, I'd rather be making this video outside right now, but it's raining today and I got I had to get these planted up. So you can see now the dark line is now buried under the soil. The spotted line that I showed you is above the soil and that's perfect right there. So now the trick is to leave this out in a shady spot, not in full sun. It doesn't have a root system yet. so. Full sun would sizzle this thing up. We're going to move this thing gradually out into more and more light once it gets some nice roots on there. Well, I'll show you uh, what they look like, how's the, how they grow roots as it starts growing some roots. And here we are. It's 10 days later. You can see the same 
pineapple top with the same lines I drew on it. And there's its roots. I don't want to disturb the roots too much. I'm just going to pop, pop it back in the soil. I just wanted to show you that real quick. I wanted to show you this really quickly. This is a difference between a pineapple in the ground and one in a pot. This is one of the this is one of the suckers that I took off of that plant. Now, this is a really common issue with pineapples. I'm actually kind of glad it happened. Some of these spots are from cold damage, but this lighter sort of chartreuse green color as opposed to this nice dark dark green color, this is an indication of lacking in iron. It's a real common issue. And so uh, I'm going to take this opportunity. This is actually not the time of year I generally would be fertilizing these, but because I've got all of the ones that I took off there are now starting to show this chlorosis, uh, I am going to make up a batch of fertilizer and show you how I do it. Uh, anyway, if, you're, if your pineapples are starting to turn this very light, bright green color, that's generally the reason. It's a very common issue with pineapples. So I'm going to make up the fertilizer, which is going to include some iron. I'm going to show you a few different options of what kind of fertilizers and iron, and iron you can use. And uh, hopefully this video won't get too long, but it's, it's very useful information for pineapples. Okay, so this is going to be a bit controversial. But the product I use to fertilize my tomatoes, or my, sorry, my tomatoes, the product I use to fertilize my pineapples is this, miracle Grow for tomatoes. Now, to all of my crunchy granola hippie peeps out there, uh, I love you guys, first of all, and I do love organic gardening techniques, and I use them, and it's a good way to do it. And if you want to do that, just use a formulation that is an organic formulation for tomatoes that'll work just as well. Um, I am with you guys when it comes to pesticides. I don't put pesticides on my food plants, uh, at least not harsh, you know, chemical organophosphate or the nasty guys. I'll use neem and other, other things, as a direct thin and other natural pesticides, but not the nasty guys, not on my food plants. But when it comes to nutrients, uh, you know, phosphate is phosphate, nitrate is nitrate. There's a lot of weird beliefs out there about that, and we can have discussions about that if you want. But this is what I use. But any formulation, whether it be organic or definitely not organic, uh, you, can, you can use that. But what I do is I cut this down to one-fifth strength. So this product says to use one tablespoon for a gallon. I'm going to put one tablespoon of this into a five-gallon bucket. Now, to this I will also add a chelated iron supplement. Uh, there are other ways you can do this. Now you can also use, sometimes what I'll use is a granular 10-10-10 formula uh, as the fertilizer and then a granular iron uh, supplement such as ironite or malorganite. Ironite and malorganite have their own problems too. There's a lot of people that don't like those products because they are mine tailings and they contain other heavy metals in really small amounts, but they do contain them. And if that's something you're concerned about, that's definitely something to look at. I like this company, Southern Ag. They make a lot of really good products. Their products are cheap and very high quality, uh, but this is a good source of iron. Anyway, this says to use one tablespoon tablespoon per gallon as well. I'm not going to put even anywhere near that amount in there. I actually don't measure it. I'm just going to put a little tiny splash in there, which I'll do right now. That's it. Not even a teaspoon. Now, I just mixed in that water. You'll notice that, that, that that's, it's still clear. It's got a slightly amber color to it. Now, this is really important. If your water is highly chlorinated, chlorine is a, a strong oxidizer. And even if your iron is chelated, the iron will oxidize and turn a rusty, cloudy color, and it will all be clouded over. And if that happens, you know you've got a lot of chlorine in your water, and what you need to do is dechlorinate that water beforehand. Otherwise, you're really just making rust. You might as well just stick nails in the pot because that iron is not going to be very available to your plants. But when you put the iron in the water, if it's still completely trans transparent like this, it'll change the color to a to a sort of like an amber color. But if it's still transparent and not cloudy, then you're good. That iron is still in a perfectly usable form for the plant. This is very important. Now I'm going to add the fertilizer and we'll then raise the volume up all the way up to the five gallon mark. Okay, so that's one tablespoon. It's a little less than one tablespoon. I always go light 
on fertilizer. Always, always, always. Never actually fertilize what they say to use on the package. You can burn your plants. Doesn't matter what kind of plants you're, you're fertilizing. Never, ever, ever go full strength on fertilizer. Also, never, ever, ever under any circumstances fertilize any plant that's dry and dehydrated. Water that plant very well at least an hour before you, you feed them. Anyway, let's go ahead and mix this in there. I'm gonna bring the, the volume up and, uh, and then it'll be ready to go. I'm not gonna actually show uh, pouring it on the plants because that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. You just put a little splash of this on there. When you go one-fifth strength like this, you uh, are, are not running the risk of burning the plants. So you just go ahead and splash it on there. And uh, I use, uh, sometimes even go down to one-tenth strength. Uh, and so, so even like half of a tablespoon to this five gallon bucket. At that point, you can really start feeding your plants weekly. I call that the weekly, weekly regimen, as in weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y, W-E-A-K-L-Y, weekly, weekly. And uh, you get really, really results with that kind of a feeding regimen. And that's, that's true for most plants. If you follow the instructions and give them a big whopping dose once a month, you kind of burn their roots a little bit, you give them the food they need, but then the rest of the month they don't really have exactly what they need. It's not the best way. Uh, a better way is to go much lower. Really, of course, as all of you crunchy granola hippie peeps will say, the best way is to give them lots and lots of good organic matter, have it do it the natural way, and that really is the best way. Um, but it's not always the easiest way, it's not always the fastest way, and when your plants are definitely hurting for iron louis, mine are right now, and those, those, ones, those ones that are in the pots, um, you gotta do this right away, and then another week or two, those will green up, and pretty soon those are gonna go into the ground, but anyway, I just wanted to show you how I did this and give you a little bit of a discussion about this, um, and uh, choose your own way, there is not one right way or wrong way to feed your plants or to cultivate uh, the beauty and the food around you. Uh, choose what is best for you. Choose it from logic, not from emotion, and, and go forward. And I hope you guys have lots of success, but this is how I do it. Now, if you've watched this far, thank you so much. I hope you got all the information that you needed on how to maintain your pineapple plants. I hope you're going to get lots of delicious pineapples in the future. Uh, I, you may have noticed I'm not posting videos quite as often, and that's because I'm doing these longer form videos. I have lots of videos in the works right now, so keep, keep watching for them. They're going to be a little longer, a little more informative, because that's what you guys have been asking for. If there's anything specifically you guys want, please do uh, ask for them in the comments. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Also, try to keep your questions and comments on point and positive. I've been getting a lot of people uh, coming at me with these long emails about all their medical problems. I don't respond to them. People like that get angry with me. Um, I want to be there for you, but I don't want to be your pen pal or your sounding board for problems that you definitely need help for, but I, I'm not here to help you for. But as far as like plant questions, or if you are looking for plants, or or anything like that, uh, I'm absolutely here for you. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it, and I hope I helped you out. Cheers.